G'day, Starlo here, and I've got to tell you, I'm pretty excited because today I'm catching up with Roger Osborne, and I'm sure a lot of you will recognize that name because Roger is an absolute beach and rock and estuary fishing guru, but beach fishing is probably his strongest suit, and particularly catching and using beach worms. <laughs> I've always struggled to catch beach worms. When I lived up in Gerringong, I used to be able to catch a few on Seven Mile Beach, enough to catch a feeder fish, but since moving further down the coast, I struggle to find them, let alone catch them. Now, if you're gonna learn from anybody, Roger Osborne is the man. He literally wrote the book <laughs> on beach worming and he offers an online course on beach worming. Fantastic. I'll put the details of how you can get involved in that down below in the description and the comments because he really is worth following. If you don't already follow Roger, make sure you subscribe to his channel. All right, I'm gonna go down and see if he can find some beach worms on my local beach because I can't. Roger's already into it, swishing a stocking containing half a dozen pilchards back and forth in the shallow wash to hopefully attract the attention of some hungry beach worms. But those worms were few and far between. Roger was having to work for them. I was glad to see that it wasn't only me who struggled to find them here. I haven't seen one yet, but we're going to work our way along. But he's not giving up. It's a few little pippies. Okay. See? It's very flat which is, um, it's very good for learners when it's flat. Yeah, because you get a bit of time. <laughs> That's what I always used to hate, getting whacked by that next wave, just as you're at the critical point of grabbing them. It's like, uh, uh, smack. Oh, there's a worm, look at that. My gosh, it's a worm. What? It's a worm, look at oh, that. Yeah. So it's there not it a is. Big, it's not a big one. Oh, he's all right. It's not a, is it just a little one, look at that. So, I mean, there's a worm. So far we've seen a worm. That's probably the only one I'm on the beach. I'm just going to let him grab it oh, like that. Look at then that. I'm going to put my fingers in either side like that. I'm actually going to take my time and go oh. slowly. Now I'm just going to close my fingers and pull him out. No way. There you go. Looks like a beach worm, only smaller. <laughs> it's a little one. But it's, it's a whiting bait though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so he's going, he's going in, the, in, in the sky rocket. <laughs> awesome. There you go. They are here. They are here. So we just need a few other ones. But yep. maybe they'll, the scent will start to get around and yep. hopefully find a couple of big ones. Okay. Come on, wormies. Come on. You see one? No. No. No, I'm just saying, come on, come on, worms. Singing the worm song. Yeah. He's on the scent, he's on the scent. It's oh. the tiniest little sand crab you ever saw. Oh, right. It was a baby. <laughs> it's a rare worm. The second worm, the second Eurobadala worm. And you'll be able to see him in just a second. Just there. Can you see him? Just oh, yeah, there? yeah, yeah. He's a little bit bigger, I think. Oh, fractionally. He's just fractionally bigger. So, we're just going to um, we're gonna get an opportunity now to catch him, so we may as mm -hmm. well just, before the next wave comes up, there's a little wave coming. So, we're going to let him grab it like that. See, he's got, here comes a wave. Oh, did you get him? Oh! oh. I had him, but he must have just slipped through. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, shouldn't, I, should, I shouldn't have missed that worm. I was actually looking at that wave thinking, should I go or should yeah, I wait? So I had to speed it up at the end. Yeah. But <laughs> that one was like Ooh, that. That was that close. It was, it was actually a bit bigger. It was a bit bigger. Yeah, yeah. All right, we might be getting into them now. I'm quietly relieved to see that even the worm whisperer misses out occasionally, but not often. Yeah, I just saw this slightly steeper grade here. I thought maybe that might work. I'm gonna watch that wave. Uh, this other little wave's coming, so I'm gonna wait. Yeah, was there was there was there two or one? I only saw one that time. There he is. Come on, little fella. Yeah, he looks all right actually. See, he's he's a decent sized worm, that guy. Now I'm just gonna slowly close my fingers 
and pull him out. That's a nice bait. See, that's all right. Three baits in that, probably. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. A regularly worm. Well done. Let's just have a little, um, let's see if there's any more here. Oh, well, he looks all right, actually. Yeah. Mate, that's three in one spot. Oh, no, it's just mind boggling. <laughs> I think that's a different type of worm. All right, we need some water. There you go. Oh, it might be enough. Come and grab it. Come on. Look, he hasn't bitten it yet. So you like to give him a chew first? Yeah, you've got to make sure they actually engage. But once they've bitten it, it's like... Oh, OK. Um, it's it's skinny, like... But... Yeah, but that's all right. Yeah, yeah. But can you imagine if I cut a beautiful piece of Wagyu beef, seasoned perfectly, and I had it just on your lips? It's like, I reckon with the worms, once they've actually bitten it, it's like, ah, uh, they, I reckon, <laughs> worm I reckon, I reckon they're like, um, they, they've got, they're, it, they're, all they can think about is food. I'm going to have to tote my fingers now. Oh. So it's not that big. Yeah, but he's thick. Yeah. That's what we used to call Look, he's biting, he's biting Yeah, yeah I know. He's having a go. Alright, I think we should go fishing. Alright, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've oh, learned we've learned something. So the, steeper, the steeper bit seems to be the best. So, the, uh, so therefore, this northern half of the beach mm -hmm. will be... I've okay. already learnt plenty, and now it's time to cast yeah. a line. I'll show you, that's, 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 our, that's our pickings today. Oh, that's all right. That's a little session. And it doesn't take the master too long to convert one of those worms. I got something. I don't know what it is, but... He's on before I even get a bait in the water. Not bad. My first cast, I got baited. I pulled it in, the worm was gone. Right. So... But this was a more solid bite. I my belt on, so I'll just throw this little worm in there. Okay. Looks like a reasonable fish. I'm yeah. going to say brim. Yeah, you're probably right. So you just cast onto the sandbank and pulled it back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a brim. Not that big, but oh. Oh, he's all right. There you go. Beautiful little beach brim. Oh. So that was my second cast. The first cast I was baited in about one or two minutes and it didn't take that long to get that bite. So that one is, well it's a, it's a legal sized fish so we don't have any fish left at home and we're always eating it so I know where he's going. Followed the hook, but he's big enough. Yeah, he's legal. Yeah. Oh, truly. Nice. There you go. Yeah, I just kind of was. You see what that little bit yeah, of swirly, yeah, sandy yeah. bit is just off, just in yeah. there. My first cast was there, and I had these little tiny packs, and then right. nothing. And then when I wound it in, there was nothing there. Roger wastes no time killing and bleeding his brim, and then he's straight back into it. Notice how he just makes a short lob cast into the gutter. You don't always need to cast long on the beach. It looks good though, doesn't it? Yeah, I like it. I've walked along Wairo Beach, which is a big beach. It's probably five or six k's long, and it'll have a variety. Oh, -ho! look at that! Woohoo! What do you think? Why do you say why? Well, I, 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 that's what I thought by looking at your rod. The little, all the little movements. Yo-ho! I like that rod. <laughs> Good bud. It's a brim. <laughs> it's a brim, is it? Okay.
Just a little fella. He can go back. He's probably legal, but only just. Nice hook up anyway. Well, it's a start. <laughs> what, are, what are we thinking when we're down at a spot like this? Well, I, I love that. That shallow sandbar out there is getting all churned up by the waves and it's got to be exposing food, which is then washing into this little bit of a gutter here. So many people, I watch them come down to a spot like this, put a really big sinker on and try and cast over that sandbar and out behind the, the break. But I think most of the fish traffic is going to be happening in here, do you agree? Yeah, no, I do, because you know how fish are pretty simple, aren't they? they <laughs> they're just looking for a meal, aren't they? Yep, absolutely. And we've got to think, where's the most likely spot that they would be wanting to eat? And you know, often that's, sometimes they patrol, patrol the edge, don't they? Oh, it's yeah. unbelievable how close in they'll come at times, yeah. I think I just had a bite. Did you get a bite? Yeah, I think so. Something's going on. Yeah, I had a bite, I'll see if there's... Got him? Yeah, I got him. You got him. Oh, look at that, pulled a little bit. <laughs> when are we going to get a whiting? <laughs> you know what this is, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's our little friend, the stingray. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. Oh well, it's just um, a little Sammy Stingray. You've still got to be careful with these guys because it doesn't matter how big they are, they have spikes on them. Oh, he's slippery, this guy. Very slippery. There you go, can have a look at him. Now I think that, I'll show you here, you can see the worms, that's the worm's head sticking out of his mouth. I'm not going to be able to get the hook out, so I'm going to actually cut the line and leave the hook in there. The, the, the stingray will survive, it'll just cause more damage if I try and remove it. So I'm going to give him the kiss of life. I could have used my knife, but I didn't. <laughs> Roger needs to tie on a new hook now, so this is a good time for us to show you our rigs. I've just got two little bean sinkers there. I like to carry a bunch of small sinkers rather than big sinkers, and I'll put two or three on if I need to. That way yeah. I can go small if I want to. I've got a couple of little beads on there. I put that, I'm using braid. Yeah. Uh, I love braid. I, I can feel what's going on with it. And I can cast better, I reckon. But what I have found with braid and a leader sometimes, when you hook a fish that really takes off, the sinker will blow back up over the, the knot and get oh, on your braid, yeah, and then gotcha. it won't want to slide down again. So you yeah. get the fish in close and you've got the sinker there. So I put a little bead on there to stop that happening. That, yeah. that stops at the knot and stops the sinkers blowing back up over the knot. I've got another little bead here above my swivel just to protect my knot yeah. from the, the bouncing because I'm fishing really light. I've got an eight pound leader on here. Little swivel, probably 45 centimetres down to my long shank hook. And a lot of people like a bit of red plastic tubing uh, when they're fishing with worms for whiting and so on. And my son, Tom, has got a 3D printer and he's making these for me. And they're actually a little beach worm head it's pretty cool. It's got legs and everything, and I think we're going to probably end up selling a few packets of these. Well, the detail's really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks perfect. We're calling them the worm burner. The worm burner. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Which well, is us. That, that looks excellent, really. All right. Let's... Up, up to you, sir. Yeah, it might be best if I, because I'm drifting quicker than you. I actually have a star sinker, just a small one, which is running. 
on my line, down to a bead to protect the knot. Then I have a swivel and about a 40 centimetre litre to my worm bait on a long shank hook. The difference between this rig and what Steve's doing is with the star sinker, I'm holding position. Steve's moving around a little bit more in the surf, he's covering more area. Both methods are good. Sometimes it's better to be stationary, sometimes it's better to be flowing with the current a little bit. My leader, my leader is 10 pound fluorocarbon. So the whole outfit is 10 pound line basically, which is pretty light for off the beach and has been working really well in recent weeks for the whiting and the brim. So I'm going to whack this back out there and see if I can get another one. We're here right on the bottom of the tide, which has turned now and is just starting to come in. Low tide's not only good for worming, but also a great time to clearly identify structural features, like that little gutter that we're fishing in. I'm on again. Small. Ooh. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> this rod's so much fun. <laughs> it's a whiting. Not quite, I don't think. That's one of the target species. It is. Oh yeah, he's probably legal too. What do you reckon, is he legal? Yeah, yeah. No, no problem, he would be... 28, 29? 29 maybe. All right. May need to be 27 here in uh, New South Wales. So that's, oh yeah, no, that's legal as soon as I've wrap my hand around it I can tell that it's a, a legal whiting. Good stuff. I'll go and stow him in the bucket. I'm off to kill and bleed my whiting. They're one of my favourite eating fish. I just love them. With another bait on it's back into it. Roger and I are constantly sharing what we're observing too, as well as taking careful note of where each other's lines are to avoid crossovers or tangles. There we go. That didn't take long. And it's another whiting. There we go. That's a slightly bigger whiting. Now we're getting a meal together. Another keeper. It's turning into a nice little session thanks to Roger's worming skills. <laughs> Lovely. No, I'd have to say that Tom's little worm burners <laughs> are doing their job. I'm using about half as much worm as I normally would and I'm catching the whiting. But just on the edge there I've got some bites. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm getting bites too. Did you hook it? Yeah. Aha! Oh. That was oh, right in, right really? in on the edge. So that might oh. be what you missed too. Is that a is that, is that a sand flathead or a baby dusky? I'll soon tell you. It's a little dusky. A little dusky. Oh no, it's not. Yeah. No, oh. it's not. I think it is a sand flathead. Yeah. You're looking at its tail. Yeah, yeah. The oh, mark. Yeah, the yeah. No, that's a sand flathead. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's different. Yeah. The dusky's got a big, a big spot, a big blue spot, usually the dark spot surrounded by blue. And the sand flathead has got this series of little bars on its tail. 
and they've all got spikes. Oh, did you get spiked? Oh, no, no, but very close. Ah! Still trying. Go on, mate. That's the way. Doesn't need much water to swim in. <laughs> Did you know that lifting one foot like that stops the water shooting up the crutch of your shorts? It's a good trick to know. Surprisingly, things went a little quiet after that and Roger and I had jobs that we needed to do at home. So we pulled the pin and headed back to the cars. But I absolutely loved fishing with this bloke and I reckon we'll do it again. Let us know if you'd like to see that. See you in the next video. Tight lines.